All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story, Brandon Curry. He's on a roll. Brandon Curry has been posting physique update after physique update, training video after training video, and I'm loving every second of it. I mean, I think Brandon, at the end of the day, he knows how to play the game. He knows what he's doing. He knows how to do this social media thing, and he's doing a fantastic job of keeping the conversation going about Brandon. Like I said, I think that a lot of the conversation about the 2020 Mr. Olympia has been more about the Phil Heath comeback than the Brandon Curry defending his title for the second year. Um, and I think that he's done a fantastic job of keeping his name in this conversation. And I would like to see more of that from Phil Heath. I would like to see um, some physique updates or a picture just like this. Um, do you know how much conversation that would stir up if Phil Heath posted a picture exactly like this picture of Brandon Curry, shirt off in front of a mirror, showing what his upper body is looking like at, what are we, 14 weeks out from the Olympia? That would be huge, and that would you know generate a lot of conversation about Phil but he's not doing that, and Brandon is, and I think that's fantastic for Brandon's momentum um, and keeping his name, like I said, in that conversation going into the Olympia. So hats off to Brandon, and I was scrolling through the comments, and I did see that comment. Nick here with Nick Strength and Power, and today yet another physique update from the reigning Mr. Olympia, Brandon Curry. You know it's coming. And Brandon responded and said, oh, yeah, got to love me some Nick Strength and Power, so I'd love to see it. Um, and shout out to Brandon. By the way, his midsection's looking tight here. I mean, in a lot of the updates that he's posted, um, you couldn't really see his midsection in those pictures. And for 14 weeks out, as round and as full as Brandon is, he's got a tight midsection. I think that's a promising sign going into the Olympia this year. Now, next up in the news, Patrick Moore. So Patrick Moore basically officially announced he's going to be taking a long time off. He will be skipping the Olympia. Um, and he says, finished fourth this weekend at the Cali Pro. Of course, not the placing I wanted, but I feel this is pretty accurate. I've been pro three years and it's been an absolutely incredible experience i've had a pro win a great showing at my first mr olympia and an arnold invite i love this sport and competing with some of the best guys in the world i've done at least two shows a year since being a professional and now it's time for a break although i love the stage i can only grow with some serious time off three shows this year and i'm ready for some quality off-season lifting and eating with my sponsor yamamoto nutrition behind me I will be able to make some significant improvements that will allow me to be more competitive at a high level. I appreciate all of you guys' support, and now it's time to take it to the next level. Hope you have a great week. Time to get to work. Now, the question is, what went wrong with Patrick Moore? Everybody's been commenting it. Everybody's been asking me, what about your boy Patrick? He said he was going to win the Cali Pro. He said he could win New York. And I think at the end of the day, it's really came down to size. Patrick needs to put on more size, and I hope he's able to do that without sacrificing the classic lines and shape of his physique. Because really, at the end of the day, um, Patrick is really dangerous, even at the size that he's at, when he's conditioned like he was at the 2019 Mr. Olympia. But I think it's kind of been proven now that he's only dangerous at the size that he's at when he has that conditioning. When he doesn't have that crazy conditioning, that size doesn't look as good next to some of these guys that are much, much bigger than him. Where at the Olympia, with that conditioning, it carried him a long way, even though he was still smaller at the Olympia. And I don't think Patrick's conditioning was horrible or even bad at these two shows. I think he was actually on, but it wasn't the same as what we saw from him at the Olympia. And I think that's really the reason for these placings is because Patrick is really dangerous when he is 100% on 2019 Olympia conditioning. But without that, I think he does lack the size to be as competitive. And in these lineups, he kind of just gets overshadowed and outmuscled and overpowered by some of the size of these other guys. And I think at the end of the day, it comes down to size and conditioning. And when he doesn't nail the conditioning like he did in 2019 at the Olympia, it's just not as good of a look for his physique. Now, keep in mind, we're talking about top six, top four placings here. We're not talking about Patrick getting dead last. He's still in the mix at these pro shows, so don't get it twisted. He's not to be counted out yet. But I hope this offseason time that he takes is productive for him, and I hope he puts on the size that he needs, but not too much. I hope he doesn't play the size game too much where he loses the tight midsection, where he loses the lines that he has, where he sacrifices some of the structure that he has. Um, hopefully he puts on just enough, but not too much. It's a, it's a very delicate game and a fine line that you walk when you take an offseason and say you're going to put on size. So best of luck to Patrick, and I look forward to seeing him in whatever show he chooses to compete in, I'm guessing, next year. Now, next up in the news, Justin Rodriguez, your second-place finisher at the New York Pro. Um, he didn't do the Cali Pro, even though he looks like he's in fantastic shape, but he has announced that he is preparing for the Chicago Pro. 
which is about five weeks away. And I think at this point he's proven himself to be a serious contender based on how he looked in New York. We saw probably the best conditioned version we've seen of Justin. And I think he's going to be dangerous in that Chicago Pro lineup where we will also be seeing Nick Walker. Nick Walker said in a recent post, it's not about proving the haters wrong anymore. It's about proving the ones that support you right and I plan on bringing an even better package to the Chicago Pro. I thought my motivation was high before, but here I come. And by the way, that is a fantastic picture. I believe it was taken by Whitman Photo. Fantastic picture there. And I've actually got a lot of faith in Nick. I think he's got every bit of the potential um, to win his pro debut. I don't know who all is going to be in that lineup. I don't know for sure if Big Rami is going to end up jumping in that Chicago Pro. But it would sure be cool if he did. So shout out to Nick. Shout out to Justin. I wish them both the best of luck at the Chicago Pro. I think it's going to be a good show. And I believe it's one of the last, if not the last, opportunity to qualify for the Olympia. I believe it's after that Europa Spain show. So I think we're going to see a lot of guys maybe jump in that Chicago Pro for a last-minute qualification at the Olympia. Or that Spain show, of course. Now, next up in the news, let's talk classic physique. It's been a while since we've talked about Terrence Ruffin, a.k.a. Ruff Diesel. He posted a posing update on his Instagram today, 14 weeks out from the classic physique Mr. Olympia. And yes, Terrence is already qualified for the classic physique Olympia. And I personally believe that he is one of the threats to that title, or at least that top three, top four spot. With George and Keon now switching to 212, both of whom were top six guys before I think T I think Terrence is going to be the guy that really moves up in the ranks in the absence of those two guys. I've been saying for a while I think he's got one of the best physiques in the division. He's got a fantastic and polished skill set when it comes to his posing, and I think he's going to be extremely dangerous at the Classic Physique Olympia this year. And I wanted to make sure I included him in this video because he is one of the guys I've got my eye on for being one of the contenders. I think he could crack the top three, to be honest with you guys. Right now I'm kind of looking at Steve Lorius. Alex Combernero, um, and of course, Ruff Diesel, some of the guys that are, I think are really going to make an impact at this year's Classic Olympia, and of course, Breon and Chris. Now, next up in the news, I wanted to shine the spotlight on a natural competitor. I've had a lot of people send me this guy's pictures and this guy's profile. Bob Waterhouse86, who this past weekend competed um, in a British NPC show over in the UK. And at that show, he competed in Classic Physique, ended up winning the overall, and he turned pro there. Now, the reason why I wanted to include him in this video is because he's a natural bodybuilder. I looked through his page, and he's competed in various natural organizations and natural contests, and honestly, I believe he has a natural physique, and I think it's impressive that he was able to earn his pro card while being a natural competitor. And it looks like he's been competing for like over a decade. So while I think a lot of people love to play the natty or not game, and guess whether or not someone's natural. I actually wanted to just give the spotlight to someone that I believe is natural, had a huge accomplishment in turning pro and classic physique, and I wanted to give him a shout-out in this video. So congratulations to Bob Waterhouse earning his pro card naturally over there in the UK. Now, next up in the news, the Internet's favorite training partner, Andrew Jack, who is Larry Wheels' training partner, announced on Instagram today that he will be going for the classic physique division Class C in the six foot one to six foot three category where he can weigh between two thirty and two thirty seven. And he says at this point he's about six months out. He was prepping for a show earlier in the year, but obviously due to everything that's going on, that got postponed and canceled. So now he's got a sight set on a show six months from now. And it will be classic physique. So best of luck to Andrew Jack in his first ever competition of any kind. Now, the final story that I have for you guys today, a ton of you guys have been tagging me in this. It's actually been crazy how many times I've been tagged in this post. Teron Beckham has posted a strict curl video, or at least he called it a strict curl. To be fair, it was a cheat curl because it wasn't up against the wall, but it was a pretty strict cheat curl of 165 pounds, and you guys were absolutely losing your minds about this, and everyone was tagging me in it. I thought it was impressive, but I want to see him do it up against the wall. I mean, I just did basically the same thing on my Instagram, 165 pounds, a 70-pound wagon wheel on each side, a 25-pound bar, that's 165 pounds, cheat curl it for two with relatively strict form, and I did that for several sets of two. I did 175 for a single a few weeks ago. Um, I could probably strict curl somewhere in the 160s right now. I could probably, we'll see what happens. I'll probably do a video here soon on my Instagram. So if you want to check me out on Instagram, follow me on Instagram. Um, if you guys have your own strict curl stories, tag me in them. I'll repost them on my Instagram page. 
at Nick Strength Power. So go over there, follow me, tag me in your strip curl stories. I will repost every single one. That's going to wrap it up for the video today, guys. As always, give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to this channel if you have not subscribed yet already. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. And as always, Nick Strength and Power, signing out.